Great. Thank you, Daryl. Yeah, uh, there, there I am. How is everyone? Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, my name is Claudia Holland, and I'm Chief of the Bureau of Library Development here in the Division of Library and Information Services. And that is a mouthful. <laughs> it's really great to have y'all on the call today. I do appreciate your time. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about something near and dear to many of our hearts, and that is the Sunshine State Library Leadership Institute. Yes, we are going back fully live in person, and we're so excited about it. Uh, this this uh, institute, as well as the Next Level Library Leadership Institute, they are supported by the uh, federal government with using LSTA funds. Uh, and we administer that, uh, uh, we, we at the LIS administer that program in partnership with the Northeast Florida Library Information Network. And I'm thrilled to have today with me, uh, Jenny Eason, who is uh, Neflin's membership support coordinator and also our logistic guru for, for uh, Silly and Nellie and uh, our one and only Linda Bruno, who is Silly's instructor of record and facilitator. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Uh, they're here to talk about their Silly experiences. Um, Jenny, Jenny has been not only our logistics coordinator for Silly, but she has also, uh, she is currently a Nelly uh, participant and a silly graduate, so she can talk from both sides of the of the uh, fence, I guess you would say, about silly and Nelly. Uh, Linda, are you on, or you want to just wait? Or I'm here whenever yeah. you want me. Okay, well, okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> if y'all, if anybody who wants to turn on their webcam, go ahead and do so. We'd love to see your faces. Uh, Is mine not showing? I show that it's yes, on. Okay, yes, you are all right. on. And thank you. I, I don't see Jenny now though, but I don't know Jenny's where. there. She's You're there, Jenny. Okay. She moved around somewhere, I'm but here. she's there. <laughs> You're there. Okay, goody. All right. Um, I thought we'd start with uh, learning a little bit about the background of Silly without, you know, making it too onerous. I think for both Jenny and everybody else. But um, if Jenny would provide a really brief history of Silly. And then afterwards, uh, Linda will talk about, oh, all kinds of things, silly and Nelly. So uh, if, if you have any questions as we're talking, I don't think either Jenny or Linda or I mind that you just jump right in and say, hey, I have a question about whatever the issue may be. Um, so please don't hesitate to do so. So Jenny, want to get started? Sure. I'm a little intimidated to tell the history of Silly because I haven't been involved that long, <laughs> but I'll tell you what I know okay. and give you just a little bit of background about the program. So like um, Claudia said, I'm Jenny Eason and I work at Nephlin and we partner with DLIS for Silly. So you, if you ever see, you know, Nephlin's name beside, you know, associated with Silly, you might wonder why, since we're only, we cover the Northeast part of the state, but like she said, we do the behind the scenes uh, management of the program um, for the entire state. So I've been at Nephlin for five and a half years. So I've been working in that role um, with Silly during that time. Um, but like Claudia said, I was also a participant in year 14. And it's something I had wanted to do when I worked in libraries in the past. I worked in academic and school libraries, but I just didn't have the opportunity to and my other jobs. So when I started working at Nephilim, that's one of the first thing I asked if, is if I could participate in Silly, and I got to do that. So um, that's where Nephilim comes in, but uh, the background of the program, there was a program um, that's really the precursor, I guess, to um, the Sunshine State Library Leadership Institute, and that is Cephalin's program down in the Southeast, which was Sunseekers Leadership Institute. And that started, I think, in 1997, and I believe it met every other year. Like I said, I could be wrong, but that's my understanding. 
And it was the brainchild of Dr. Elizabeth Curry, who I think at that time was the director of Cephalin. Um, and she's, many of you probably know her and are familiar with her and you know her leadership expertise. And um, she's beloved by many in the state. And her idea was to have, um, she saw a need for a leadership program um, for library staff, but also to have something a little different than other programs that were offered. At that time, most of the programs were um, sort of immersive, intensive programs where you would go for a few days and get everything and then you would go on with your life and go back to normal. So her idea was to have a program that met um, monthly for a day for several months, nine to 10 months. And so you were learning over a long period and it was just a different experience. So they started um, Sun Seekers and had a lot of success with that program. And so much so that I think that was where the idea for um, DLIS to have a program that was statewide and that's where Silly came from. So um, the first cohort for Silly was in 2004, 2005. And the program runs from October through the following July. So we started October of 2004 with the for first cohort. And um, you may know each year we have two cohorts of 20. So in that year, it was in Clay County and in Hillsborough County. But every year the program moves around the state. And that is um, something that we do strategically to try to get give everyone a chance to participate um, within a, you know, a reasonable amount of time. So if you look at a map of all the places where Silly has been held over the past 16 years, you'll see that it's, it's blanketed the state. Um, and um, so each year you'll hear two new locations, which I know we'll talk about today. So, um, oh, and I did count up too. It has actually been held in 17 different counties during the course of the program. So it has covered a wide geographical range. So over that time, we've had um, more than 600 graduates. We have about 40 each year, although one year we had um, only one cohort of 20. So that totals up to about 620 graduates. Many of those are still working in our libraries in Florida. Um, some of the library directors you work with or the, the people in leadership in your library system probably have some connection to Silly in one way or another. So there's a, a huge impact that's gone across the whole state. Um, some have retired and some have moved on to other states or other fields, but um, the, the reach of Silly is very wide. Uh, let's see. So one of, some of the changes that have taken place over the course of the program, it is not um, just begun and then been static for, for 16 years. It has changed every year and continues to change. So people who participated in year one, this is a very different program now than it was then. Um, one thing we've added is mentors. So each participant of the program chooses a mentor that they work with. That's a very integral part of the program. That started in year two. So we've had a lot of people who maybe haven't participated or haven't been a participant in Silly, but have mentored in the program. And some people have done both. So I don't know how many in the state have been mentors, but I would say it's probably, you know, it could be three or 400. Some have, have mentored multiple times. And we actually started after the 15th anniversary of Silly, we started a mentor hall of fame and inducted 15 people into the mentor hall of fame. So all of those people have mentored four times, at least four times over the course of Silly. So, um, but we're always welcoming new people in. If you have graduated from Silly, we really encourage you to consider mentoring or putting your name out there as a mentor. It's a great way to stay engaged with the program if you had a good experience the first time around and help somebody else who's who's coming along. Can I just mention real quickly uh, that there is a uh, a form on the Silly webpage uh, for people who are interested in applying to be a mentor. It's sort of a formality, but we want, you know, of course, for people who we don't know or who have not been through Silly, it's a it's a way for us to get to know you. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's a, a really good thing for the new participants. Some of them are, are at a loss. They can choose people who aren't in the library field, um, but some of them are at a loss as to who to choose and, and need a pool of people to to look at. So. The more people we have who put their names into that pool, it's really valuable to the new participants coming in. So um, please consider doing that. 
Um, another change that we've added over the course of the program is the leadership project. And that is um, kind of goes along beside the monthly meetings and all the assignments that you're doing. It's a project that lets you kind of um, practice the skills that you're learning in the Leadership Institute. It's a project of your choosing, something that you're interested in or passionate about that will be beneficial for your library. So you have a lot of um, freedom to choose um, something that works for you. And it's not meant to be overwhelming. It's meant to be something that enhances your experience going through silly. So that's another um, addition that I'm not sure what year that came along, but that's been added to the program over time. And of course, we have had a series of really, really strong facilitators. Linda is our current facilitator, but we've had several over the course of the program. And people tend to come and stay for a few years, so we have some consistency, but each facilitator has brought new things to the program and enhanced it um, and made it a stronger program. And then each year also at the end of the program, um, DLIS and the facilitator will sit down and evaluate the curriculum and make any changes, add new resources, um, look at who the new thought leaders are out there and keep adding to that curriculum to make it stronger and stronger. So it really does continue to grow and evolve and strengthen and it's just a really excellent program. Um, the only other thing I wanted to say is that you may be familiar that Silly has been on pause for the last two years, like so many other things have been on pause for the last two years. Um, but this program really, the strength of it is, a lot of the strength of it comes from the cohort and meeting together each month with your colleagues from across the state. And um, Claudia may speak more to this, but when we knew we couldn't meet face to face, um, we decided to pause this program so that it didn't lose that quality, so that it didn't, um, we didn't make a fundamental change to the program that, that took away from that. So that gave us an opportunity to do something else. So we have had the next level Library Leadership Institute for the last two years, and that is a program for alumni of CILI. And um, it is meant to be, it is totally online, and it's meant to be more of an individualized experience. So you work um, there is an online co cohort, but you also work with a leadership coach one-on-one -on -one and with a facilitator, really targeting some of the skills that you um, learned about in Silly and have worked on since you graduated from Silly and want to continue to strengthen. So I have been participating in that this year, and it's been a really wonderful experience. So that is not, um, you kind of can think of that as under the umbrella of the state leadership program in addition to Silly. So we're moving back to the regular silly format, face-to-face um, -face in two cohorts, but we are still gonna keep <laughs> Nellie um, in mind and hope to offer it again in the future on, you know, on a rotating basis every few years. So if you're a silly graduate, keep that in mind. You might wanna consider Nellie in the future. Um, that's all I had for now. So I'll turn it to Linda, I guess, and, unless Claudia has anything else. Thank you, Jenny, thank you so much. And uh, you know, we're so glad to get your perspective as a, as a participant. So I hope that people will ask you questions, um, at, you know, as they come up during the course of this hour. Uh, but Linda, would you talk to us about what your role has been, is, is will be, and so on? <laughs> Yes, I will. I was with Silly for five years before we had to go on a hiatus and have been the Nelly facilitator for a couple of years. And I too am very anxious and excited to get back to face to face. I love Nelly, but the Silly program, as Jenny said, is completely different and there's a lot of group discussion and things like that. So I've been with the overall program for seven years now. So that's been a fun thing. And one of the reasons it's been fun for me is because what I've learned about myself is that I'm still learning about myself. <laughs> so every session, it seems like, whether it's Silly or Nelly, we dig into things that maybe give us a new perspective. And as Jenny said, in Silly, we have some core competencies that we work through throughout the program. And we do look at those every year. Some of them have remained the same as a core competency, but then we build the curriculum around what's going on in the world today. So that's been fun because it changes all the time. So one of the things that um, I think that makes a successful Silly person is that they're not only a lifelong learner, but they want to be a lifelong leader. 
And we always tell people it's not about the title that you have or even the position per se. It's about being a leader, whether that's a leader in place or whether you do have the title. But people lead from every direction. And we encourage everybody to consider their own leadership skills and how they would like to grow those. And as Jenny also mentioned, the project scares people a little bit. Oh, no, a project. But really, it is only meant, it's not only meant, but the primary reason it was added was to help you apply the core competencies that we learn in each session. And I want to delve into that for just a second to kind of give you a little bit of clue of what a leadership project might look like. There are hundreds that have been done over the years, really. But what we're looking for is something that will allow you to lead. And that sounds really simplistic, but sometimes when people come into the first session and start talking about their project, it's a management task. And it might be something like, I'm going to revise the employee manual because it's outdated. And that's a wonderful thing to do, but it doesn't really give you an opportunity to shine as a leader. And that's what we're looking for. Now, if you said something like, we've never had an employee manual, I want to maybe survey other libraries. I want to gather feedback from my co-workers and so forth, that might lean more toward the leadership side. So as you're thinking about, if you are going to apply for Scilla, as you're thinking about a project that you might want to work on, things like, will you have a team? And is it just the same people you've always worked with? Because they're great people, but we're trying to get you to expand your boundaries a bit. And maybe even outside your library, we've had people that have actually partnered with people outside the library to make their project successful. So don't let that scare you. People have fun with that. The projects, we love it if you can get it finished by the end of the sessions, but sometimes people are only on phase one. Maybe something happened in, in year 16, everybody's leadership projects got put on hold because the March session was the last in-person session we had. And so nobody really got to finish their projects, but they still got to apply all of the things we were learning. And that's the whole goal. So just wanted to throw that out there about the project so you don't get scared about that. As Jenny also mentioned, Jenny mentioned a lot of the things that I've got written down. So that's good. Great minds think alike, right? A lot of the mentors are previous silly participants, but we've even had mentors from other states. As long as you can stay in contact with them and you can develop a relationship with them and they can help you grow, that's really the purpose that we're hoping you find in your mentor. We do look at the core competencies. I can remember one year we sat down uh, when Jill was part of the program and we sat down at a hotel and I had all of the core competencies, competencies on five by eight index cards and it was like playing monopoly. We're removing the cards around. This one fits here. No, this one goes here. Let's take this one out completely. And we have actually added core competencies in the past and then removed them completely because we found that the group didn't really need that particular focus during that time. So uh, it is a growing and organic kind of a program. And that's what makes it so much fun from my perspective. I didn't have a lot about uh, anything that Jenny hasn't covered. So, Claudia, do you mind if I open it up for a few questions? Go right ahead. Okay, uh, I'm going to open it up. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Claudia. Go ahead. Uh, and I think that's a great idea. I, I, I know that we do have some, um, some Silly and Nellie graduates on the call with us today. And if they would like to speak up about their experience, we would love Please. that. Um, those of you who are exploring uh, um, applying to Silly, um, you can ask them questions. You can ask us questions. Um, we're here to, to, to give you some information that you might need in order to reach out to your supervisor, your you know, director, whomever, um, so that you get support from them uh, in your application. Um, uh, and I think what I'd like to throw out right now is, you know, if you're on the call and you're considering applying, what, why are you considering? What is it about uh, the Institute that appeals to you and what do you want to know more about?
I think the thing too to remember um, is that this is very much um, the cohort that that you would be meeting with is like kind of a this may sound corny, but kind of like a family, um, because you are getting to know these people. People will talk about very um, sometimes uh, personal issues um, when they're talking about experiences that they've had or how do you handle a particular issue in as a either as an employee, a staff member or as a um, uh, a director or a leader. I mean, we have people from all different kinds of libraries who apply, academic, special, school, uh, and public libraries. So that's always very interesting to see and hear about what challenges people are facing and how they handle those challenges. Um, and I think the other thing too is the, the old adage of you get more out of something the more you put in it. That is certainly true here as well, I, I think. Um, I see Athy has her hand up. Oh. I think that's what that means. I've never seen that on Zoom before, so it's something new. <laughs> Athy, Athy, just speak up, honey. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, not hi, hi, everybody. It's hey. been a long time since I've seen Claudia and Jenny and Linda in person. Um, I wanted to sing the praises of Silly because um, I will say uh, my project actually resulted in me taking a very recent promotion. So in my life, um, it has had a direct impact on um, since since my graduation in 2019, um, I took two promotions. Um, and wow. both um, the, the leadership project was actually one of the um, showcases in both of my um both of my interviews for that it gave me the ability to talk about having that type of experience um doing something that was system wide and systematic mm -hmm. um it gave me the experience for project management um i've gone on to direct some bigger projects since then as well so um, I just wanted to say uh, I, I recommend it. And for us being in the southernmost part of the state, I will say too, it's not easy. It takes dedication. Um, for me, it took me almost two hours round uh, each way for, for when I went to Lee County. But for me, it was very much worth it. Um, it was something that required me to do something outside of my wheelhouse, which was to stay on track for a longer term. <laughs> where where usually usually I, I do a wham bam thank you ma'am type of <laughs> try to knock things out as quickly as possible, but this was um, very much worthwhile um, experience for me. Um, and can't wait to hear everything's bringing back to real, real world. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you Athie. so much. You know, Athie brought up something that um, we sort of discover as we go along in the program, and that is that not everybody in the program is actually looking for a promotion, but they just want to grow their skills. And what it does for people that maybe are or not are or are not interested in a promotion. Sometimes it encourages you to take more risk. It, you, it encourages you to take on more responsibility, to speak up more, things like that, that maybe you think, I don't really ever wanna be in a promotion path, but I do wanna get stronger and more effective in my job. And Silly does that hands down, as does Nellie. Um, and we've had a lot of people that have gotten promotions, but I still get emails from people, actually people too, Athy, that were in your group. I still get emails from people from the very first sessions that I facilitated that send me leadership resources. 
because it's still top of mind for them. And I'll get these emails and I'll think, I remember that name. And when it pops up, I read this book. I thought you'd be interested. And so that just thrills me because it tells me that people are still on that same path of growing themselves. And that to me is as important as anything. And, and honestly, sometimes people go through it and they think, you know, kind of thought I wanted to be on this path. But now that I've talked to so-and-so in the class for the last three or four months, I think I would like to gravitate toward the kind of work that they're doing. And so it really broadens your horizons. And I think that's the best way to go through life. So thank you, Athie, for saying that, because that triggered all those little things to popcorn into my head. (laughs) Well, um, I was going to say my intention with my project was, like you said, Linda, to lead um, in place. My intention was not to to look for promotion opportunities. However, um, when the doors open, you know, sometimes you have to knock. And if you have the right experiences, which I think um, the leading in place type of idea um, is is super powerful for that because it lets you to do it in a safer environment. Like you're saying, the risk, there's less risk when it's your other duties as assigned versus when it's your <laughs> assigned tasks. Yes. And and not that you wouldn't do a good job for it, but you know, you feel like you're a little bit more protected in some ways. But having the experience through Silly let me actually knock on those doors and walk through them. So from a confidence level, it built your confidence. Would you say that would be a correct statement? Okay, good, good. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to say kind of to go along with what Linda and Affy both said. First, I have not had promotions since I was participated. And I'm not in an organization that there's really even a promotion available. Um, so it very, very much has been a leading in place thing for me, um, changing the way I look at what I do and how I, you know, the parts of it that I, um, fixate on the parts that I overlook and, and all of those things, it really has changed the way that I work in the role I'm in here. Um, and also like Athy, I, I traveled about two hours each way to go to, to high Springs where my cohort met, um, But what I felt like was that, um, you know, when you graduate, when you're in college, everything is about, you know, enriching your knowledge and all those kind of things. And once you leave that world, you don't get too many experiences to really do something that's that good for yourself, um, to expand your knowledge that much in, in so many ways. But every time I went, I just felt like, I have done something really good for myself today. <laughs> and because you go for the whole, basically a whole year, that just builds and builds. You really are doing something positive for yourself. And it's, you know, you don't always have that opportunity once you graduate from college. Um, so I don't know, you know, probably um, a lot of people, their hesitation to apply might be, is it gonna be too much work or too much, um, too overwhelming? I didn't find it that way at all. It just felt like it was adding to, in a positive way, it was enhancing my job and my life. And uh, the assignments that we did were the same way. They were um, helping me be better, I guess. Thank you, Jenny. I saw some comments. I wanted to comment on Lisa's comment. She commented about how great the program was and everything. But if I remember right, I could have this wrong, but Lisa had a long trip too. And so what she did was she found a great coffee place to stop at (laughs) on the way. And she started to look forward to that. Now that sounds kind of silly, but we don't want this to be a burdensome program for you. We want you to, if you're driving an hour or two hours or whatever, to think, oh, this is my day where I get to, like Jenny said, I get to fill myself back up maybe with coffee, maybe with what I learned, maybe with talking to my peers or whatever. But um, it turned out to be a really kind of a something to look forward to from that perspective that not only did she enjoy the class from what she had told me, but she also enjoyed just giving herself a little treat for driving and working hard and all of that. And we do have expectations, of course, but 
uh, like Jenny said, we don't try to burden you. It's, I, I know that in some college classes I was in, it was as if the teacher was trying to, the professor was trying to make sure we were miserable. <laughs> I did oh. not want to do that. So let me just be really clear. Yeah, but not, I do have expectations. You're not getting graded. This is no. not a grading thing. However, no. I think I think the and uh, Linda, uh, y'all y'all uh, support me in this if I'm correct. But participation and attendance; those yeah. are the two things that really count. Yes, as well as doing the 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 uh, project, and 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 being in touch with your mentor, right? Yes, and you do have practical application assignments after each session. And those are simply meant to help you apply what you just learned. So I always, uh, you're not graded. They do have deadlines. They have date. You're, they're due at the next session. So you essentially have a month to do whatever we've asked you to do. And it might just be write a report on something you're working on. So it's not anything overly complicated or overly time consuming. But the reason we ask you to do it in a timely manner is because if you held all of your assignments until the very end, you can't really learn applying them eight months after you learned that particular competency. So we just kind of weave that in and out throughout the program of, okay, we learned about developing ourselves, and now how are we going to apply that? And I give you guiding questions. I make it as easy as I can for you to do reflection about that because that's what will help you. But again, it's not about the project. It's not even about the practical application assignments. It's about opening your mind to project management, like Affy mentioned, that's one of our sessions that we're going to deal with. We talk about developing ourselves and others and leading change and leading groups and those kinds of things. And so we put things in there that help you figure out how to do that. And during the sessions, we might do everything from working on a puzzle to going around with post-it notes and matching up our ideas with somebody else's ideas. We've played Scrabble. We've done all kinds of things to try to help you absorb what we're talking about and make it fun while we're doing it. So, Claudia, I do see a question uh, from Megan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Megan asks, with the two-year hiatus, do you believe this will maybe a hard year to get into the program with more people applying than normal? I can't answer that question other than to say, um, I encourage you to apply. Um, I'm sure that you want to go to one of the two locations. You know, you probably have a preference based on where you are. Um, I think the advice I would give is to pay attention to the application. Um, in other words, answer the questions and don't be afraid to um, share part of yourself and those questions uh, or in your answers, excuse me. Um, and, uh, you know, spend time thinking about it. Um, I, this is not, um, I mean, we usually don't have like a hundred applicants or even possibly 45 for a 20, uh, participant cohort. So I, I don't know what it will be like this year, but we didn't, you know, even though, you know, we have had interest from people, um, over the couple, past couple of years about silly, silly, when's silly gonna, you know. Um, you know, people have different um, um, things that, they, that they're responsible for uh, and they may want to come, but something happens Ooh. that they cannot. Um, so don't let that prohibit you from trying. And even if you try this year, and I'm not saying you, Megan, but even if someone tries this year and isn't able to get in, there's always next year. And we have had people who have applied once, didn't get in and applied the second time and did. And that's because they probably spent more time on their application. Hope that helps, Megan. You also might wanna consider having somebody you trust read your application before you turn it in and give you a little feedback on it too. And be a little bit specific when you're answering the questions rather than just a generic, I'd like to lead my team better because that doesn't really tell us what you're looking for to grow through the program. And it doesn't really tell us that you've given a lot of thought to what areas you think you need growth in. Because really that's what we're looking for on the application is for you to tell us what areas you need growth in and why you think why do you think you would be a good choice 
to apply to Silly? And the, the answer to that question is very important to us because we want to know that you are that um, interested in being there. Yeah. And committed. And not only um, saying, you know, how, again, it's, it's what you can also bring to the cohort. Uh, what are you willing to share with your fellow cohortians? <laughs> I don't know if that's I like word, that. But <laughs> I like that. Cohortian. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's it's about a give and take kind of thing. And I, I guarantee you, you're going to get a lot out of it. Um, not only from the instruction and the readings and the assignments, but from each other. That is really, uh, we have people who have been in cohorts together and they have stayed in touch for years because of the connections they made during Silly. And y'all who are in, out there, I see you. I see you out there. You, yeah, you can speak to this if you would like. Um, I just wanted to make a quick comment. My name is Kathleen Bruner. Um, hey, I work Kathleen. at Jacksonville Public Library. I, I recognize a bunch of you guys. Um, I was a silly participant in um, 2012. And then um, I was in Nelly um, the first year last year. And um, I can't speak enough about how much I learned and how much I appreciate being in those programs. Um, they helped me professionally in ways I never thought would happen. Um, I was a little afraid of the a final um, program um, project, but um, when I, the people, the management in my organization knew that I was involved and they, they wanted to talk to me and um, they wanted to find out about what was going on. And I remember telling the um, deputy director about my program, my project and what I wanted to do. And within a month, um, there was this big thing that um, Disney was having, they were donating books. And you, if you got, if you gave a free book, you got discount tickets to their Disney on ice or whatever it was, this was a long time ago. And um, so they were getting all these books donated. And because of, I had explained my project, my entire management supported me and they gave all those donated books to my project. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> what the heck happened? And um, one of my colleagues was doing something very similar and we worked, I was doing it for um, daycares and um, childcare facilities and she was doing it for like summer camps and we worked together and we did and we had all these books and and we had changed our minds and figured this and that and we kept fine tuning it and then by the time it was over, it was it was an amazing success and I, I have, I never, expected that. I never expected the support. I thought it was just going to be a report that we kind of wrote up, but it became reality. And it, it really swept me off my feet. Um, shortly after I graduated um, Silly, my library system went through a major decline. We, um, there was a money thing and we had to cut 10% and there was, it was awful. <laughs> and I was like, but within a year or two, they had actually taken the idea that we had started and instituted it in the system. And um, it became roundabout books. It was just, I was amazed. And it was all because of silly. And I made it through that hard time in our, in our history and my JPL's history. And I, I have grown so much and I, I don't, it was hard for a couple of years um, when we, our system, you know, didn't have a whole lot of money and, <laughs> but um, we made it through. And um, when I was, saw the opportunity to join Nelly, um, the next level, it was um, uh, pretty amazing. I, when I wrote up my application, my new director wanted to approve everything. So, and he gave me all this input and I was like, wow, he really cares. And, um, and I actually got to have face-to-face -face meetings and I feel very good about my leadership skills but I didn't necessarily before I joined the next I was a still a little kind of um not totally um you know but uh the Nelly has I feel so much more self-confident I really feel like I'm a valuable part of my system I love my job um it's awesome I can't speak highly enough about both programs. It, it was, has really been a great experience for me, both of them.
Well, thank you so much. And one thing I do want to say in response to what you said is, you said it was silly, but it was really you. You did it. You you participated and you made it a priority in your life for a year. <laughs> That's a pretty long time. Um, and you know, I, I, I think that uh, doing a project, if other people here on the call would talk about their projects too and how that sort of coalesced ideas maybe for you and then how it, um, you took it the next step, not through the next, not through Nelly, but through the ne <laughs> next step with um, in your work and maybe even your attitude. I mean, it could be that you learned some skills that helped you and you helped colleagues make it through that really difficult time. I'm guessing that's the case. I know that it gave me a focus. I, I never I never had an incentive to do something specific. I had been kind of kicking it around, but then when I had that assignment, um, it really gave me the focus and I felt like I really added, it was a value add, I thought, so. And we said, we don't, we don't want it to be burdensome. We don't want you to be afraid of it. On the other hand, if it's not at least a little bit challenging, will there be any growth? And that's, that's part of what we try to incorporate into that. And I see a couple more questions and I don't have answers. Um, I do have an answer for the second one. I don't know about the first one. L Lauren is asking Claudia. Um, do you have many applicants participants who don't have their MLIS? Yes, we do. I so. Um, and so that is not a requirement. I, I'm trying to think of what the requirements are. I haven't looked at it. Well, <laughs> I think it's, is it two years, Jenny? I can't, or, I think it is two years where you're in some sort in of library leadership. Role. Mm. Uh, not leadership, but a, a, a role I'll in a library. <laughs> so you have to have, you have to have some library experience in order to know um, sort of the direction that you want to go in. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't change your mind as to what direction you're going to go in. Um, the, uh, as far as, and, and Jenny, you can jump in on this one, the project in mind. Uh, yeah, but we suggest that you have more than one project in mind in case one does not turn out to be a leadership project. It's more of a management project. Um, so this is, and, I, and one of the questions on the application has to do with what your project might be um, and, and whether you, you follow through on that particular project does not matter um, because that's something that Linda is gonna help you assess uh, during your, uh, you know, during the um, sessions, mm -hmm. so. Uh, and and here in Leon County, uh, I would hope I hope I will be there, um, and Jenny will be there for the first session, I believe, right, Jenny? Yes. Um, so, and your project needs to be your project, your idea. In other words, please don't go to your director or supervisor and say, "What should I do for my project?" Because it takes all of the investment out of it for you. So we want you to generate those ideas and look around and say, what does my community need or what do my coworkers need or what do our partnerships in the community need or whatever, so that the idea is generated from you because you'll be a lot more invested in it. You'll be a lot more excited about it because like somebody said, it's, it's a nine month program. So to keep your excitement up, it needs to be something that you really have chosen. Not to say that you're not going to get your supervisor's input because that's part of the application process process that you get approval from your supervisor but we just don't want you going directly to your supervisor and saying what should I do and hand them the paper um, we want that idea to be yours and we will work through that with you um, I, for a I couple would, of sessions go ahead Jenny I would say it's pretty um, frequent that people don't end up doing the project that they put on their application and you might even change a couple of times before you settle on the right project so it's important what you know to think through an idea, but you're not married to that idea when once the program starts. The record in my tenure is somebody was on their fourth project when we ended. 
<laughs> when we ended that particular that particular year. Um, we don't recommend that. No. And she was so <laughs> flustered the second time. She was very flustered, but then she kind of got the hang of this, and she did it pretty quickly because if you're switching every other month, you're not going to get any traction. So we help you, you know, kind of filter through that. But she had a change in boss and she had a change in something else. And I can't remember everything that happened. She found out that the third one, she just couldn't find anybody that could help her work through this project. But she ended up with something that was really good. And she did that by about the third or fourth month and was able to still get that traction, like I said, and, and work on it for the four or five months she had left and, and had a great project. But um, Again, the project is not graded either, but we want you to be professional about it. You'll do present a presentation on it. Um, so we want you to, to really be thoughtful about it and make yourself proud, make us proud. Yeah, so let's go back to that, what you just said, Linda, about the presentation. That's, I mean, it's not a formal presentation. What we ask is that you create a poster. So it's sort of like a poster session at a conference because we want you to have that experience and, and creating something that looks professional and um, that you could take and, and either make a presentation at a, at a conference or you could do it for your library, you could do it for your system, whatever. Um, you could write a paper on your uh, and submit that for publication to the Florida Libraries Journal. Just saying, I'm on the editorial board. Anyway, <laughs> um, so that is nothing to be uh, uh, concerned about either because you are the expert in that, um, in that project. And believe you me, if you know that project, you will love sharing what you did and how you accomplished it <clears throat> and, and, and sharing that idea with somebody else who wants to do it in their library or their system. So, absolutely. Who else has questions? Are there any, any, is there anybody here that's gone through silly that is planning on being a mentor that has any questions about the mentor process or what's expected of that? Is Natalie still on? She might have had to leave. Hi. I think she's gone. I see Robert's here. Yeah, Robert, <laughs> thought about it. Robert, do you have any questions? I don't know if I have any specific questions. Uh, it's a uh, at least a once a month commitment, right? You're meeting with these this person, mentee. Yes. Okay. Uh, and sometimes and it's more often than that. I'm sorry, Claudia, sure. I didn't mean to Go jump ahead. in. Go ahead. But it, you just need to keep that. You need to build a relationship to be a mentor. And uh, if you if you're not getting you don't necessarily have to physically get together because, for instance, the people that had out of state mentors, but with, you know, and way back when we didn't have zoom and all of those things. Yeah. So now it makes it a lot easier to get together with people. I was a mentor actually before I became even a facilitator in Silly. And my mentee and I just met by phone because she was about almost four hours away from me and I already knew her. So we just started from the beginning and she would tell me what her assignments were and then we would work through any issues she thought she was having or any resources that I could give her and things like that. So that's basically the process that you'll follow. And I think typically we have, we ask that the mentor um, attend the first session. Is that yes. right? Yeah. And then they're certainly welcome to come to graduation because that it's the culmination of the year that you have also uh, participated in and contributed to. Uh, so we love to have people at the graduation as well. Yes. I look forward to applying. I know I enjoyed my time with my mentor, uh, Andrew, right across the border in Hillsborough. Ah. <laughs> awesome. So uh, speaking of mentors like, um, like you were saying, Linda, earlier, I think, or maybe Jenny, too. Um, as you're thinking about a mentor, you know, think about, obviously, if it's a good fit for, for you and for that person. In other words, you know, um, is that person going to have the time uh, that you will need for them to, to, 
to give to you, um, you know, without being sort of overwhelming and, and needy, I guess the word. <laughs> but anyway, um, so you want them to, to be invested too in you and in um, whatever the project is that, because they're going to help you too in developing uh, that project. Uh, that's my understanding is that has that been your experience? Yeah, usually the mentor will help um, simply because that's what they're there for is to bounce yeah. ideas off of and things like that. And also, um, you know, they're they're there to nudge. That's what we're looking for. We we aren't they they won't push you. We tell you right away, you're the one that's leading this, but that's what they're there for is to help you keep moving along. And we highly suggest that they not be in your system especially anywhere close in your system, because you can't get objective viewpoints and different perspectives if they're in your system and you don't have the freedom, you know, it's, it's confidential information that you're sharing with your mentor sometimes, and you don't have that freedom if somebody's in your system. And sometimes we've had people that have been in a public library that is, that have had somebody uh, in a health system as their mentor. We've had people that have been in a public library and have had somebody in the academic world that have been has been their mentor. So, um, you know, again, broaden your horizons and see who you think. Jenny, who was your mentor? Who was my mentor? Actually, since I work for Nephlin, it was a little harder for me because I do, you know, I am a librarian, but I'm in a whole different role than most of the participants were. So I ended up um, asking somebody who works for Baptist hospitals and their nonprofit division, somebody I knew um, already and admired. And she really, the things that she did matched up better with what I do in my job than mm -hmm. a librarian or somebody in a library would have. Mm -hmm. So she was totally um, not in the library field, but it was a very good experience. Well, that was smart. Yeah. Looking outside the But box. I struggled for a while to find one. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to say too, that um, be thinking about a mentor, but you don't have to have that lined up until I think it's later in, you know, August around there. So you've got time to find one, but it's good to start thinking um, now. And we will make the, the mentor pool available at some point too. Oh, really? We'll send that out so that you'll have some options for people to um, reach out to. Can I, um, Jenny, can I ask, um, because I'm in a similar situation. I do the marketing and virtual services and I'm the only marketer in our library system mm -hmm. and how how was that process was it really difficult to find a mentor that could kind of relate <laughs> no I mean it it you know a lot of the the concepts you're talking about a lot of people could help you with you know a lot of the things we're studying you know are not so specific to your daily duties that somebody couldn't help you with it. Somebody else couldn't help you with it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, once I just, once I decided to look for somebody who did more of what I actually do than to look for, you know, I just had in my head, you know, who do I know who works in a library? And I know a lot of people who work in libraries <laughs> around here. <laughs> and I kept thinking and they were all good leaders and, and good, but they just, it didn't feel right because what I do is so different. And once I kind of, thought outside of the box then it fell right into place and i also have yeah, a that's recommendation for you if you need a recommendation <laughs> <laughs> who does marketing stuff <laughs> yeah i am um, yeah. and that's one thing i run into is um i do have such a a, a leadership role on a lot of things in the library system so i was really interested in the program because i want to build that confidence but i was also like well, <laughs> I'm yeah. not out in the front lines. I'm not, you know, I'm behind, I'm behind the scenes. Everything that a lot of what I do is all background. But right. It, yeah. Same it here. does involve, yeah, but it does involve um, promoting library mm -hmm. and, and our services. And so that's, I, I appreciate that insight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that can feel very um, isolating when you feel like you're the only person who's doing this job or you are the only person doing this job in your, your you know, area, your system, whatever. But there are people out there that you will meet who will be um, huge fans of yours, <laughs> huge supporters. So 
don't don't let that stop you. Okay, gang, we're about done with our hour. Does anyone have any more questions they'd like to ask? And of course, you can reach out to me or Linda or Jenny anytime with your questions. Please don't hesitate. Um, I just want to thank you all for being here today and for being interested. Uh, I, we are big fans of Silly and Nelly because we're immersed in it, but it's always gratifying to hear you know, when people come back, I mean, y'all took time to come in, even though you've been in silly and you're not going to participate in silly unless you're a mentor, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so we really appreciate your time and talking to others. Um, I want to remind you that the recording will be available on our uh, BLD uh, YouTube channel. So if you think, oh, I don't remember what they said about that, you can certainly uh, refer back to the recording. Uh, we'll be sending uh, you a link to the recording um, as well as a brief survey. So, you know, we wouldn't be library folks if we weren't sharing a survey. So if you have, would take a moment to, to fill that out, we'd really appreciate it. If you have a topic you'd like to discuss in, at future uh, DLIS discussions, please uh, let me know. Um, I'm always looking for topics that people are uh, either struggling with or want to talk about or share or whatever the situation may be. In fact, in April, um, and I don't have that date in front of my face, oh well, uh, it's usually the third Monday of the month from three to four. Um, we're going to be talking about dealing with challenging friends groups and library boards or just a difficult patron. But uh, we've had some people who really had some challenges and I think it's a good idea to, to sort of air those things and share what you've done to address a, a challenging situation. So um, we'll be resend sending reminders about uh, when we're meeting through the build Building Success newsletter, social media, our website, you know, you name it, we'll inundate you. <laughs> Um, I want to thank Jenny Eason and Linda Bruno and all of you who have spoken out how much I appreciate your being here and sharing your time. And we look forward to reading your applications. So take care. Thanks so much, everybody. You too, Claudia. Thank you. Bye.